Hey everyone, welcome to another Tutorial Tuesday. Um, so this, in this one I want to talk about a kind of a debugging tool, which I find myself using kind of a lot. It's called the Immediate Window. And this is a very Visual Studio specific thing. So if you're not using Visual Studio, then this isn't going to be super useful for you. Um, but the Immediate Window is kind of like I think it's, I would consider it like a watch, like a watch window on steroids in a way. Um, you know, in the watch window, you can look at variables, you can change variables, um, you can, you know, watch how they, how they go. The immediate window is essentially a sort of C++ interpreter that knows about the current context, like your current call state and current call context, which means you can access local, global member variables right then and there. You can call functions, you can, call functions that have side effects, although be very careful with that stuff. It essentially injects whatever you put in there uh, to whatever your current call you know, location is. Uh, you can do some really dangerous things. I've certainly crashed my program more than once by doing something in the immediate window. Um, it, it will have potentially permanent side of, permanent for the game state, I guess, uh, program state, side effects. So, you know, be careful because it may create an invalid state just by doing something. If you call a function that has some side effect, that side effect is absolutely going to happen. Um, so if you have some getter that also has some side effect, like it increments a counter or something, um, it's, it's going to increment that counter. So be aware of that. But it's a very, very powerful tool. And there's certain things you can do in it that you can't do in the watch window at all. Um, and I'll give you an example of that. So, you know, the example that I have is, is this guy. So I'll just, I'll, I'll kind of briefly walk through this. Um, I have this concept of, of these character stats. I just created this character stats class and I just created a strength stat. Um, and this concept of these bonuses. So a lot of times in games you'll have a character that has some base strength or whatever, some base stat, and then you have a bunch of buffs that will add a bunch of you know values to that. Um, so you know you might be wearing a ring, or you might have like a spell that's been cast on you, and so on. So for this example, I'm just going to abstract it a little bit and have this concept of these timed bonuses. So it's a bonus that lasts for some amount of time. So uh, if you have a bone, if you have two bonuses on you that you know, if you have a base strength of ten and you have two bonuses on you that are you know each five, then you will have effectively a strength of twenty. And then one of those bonuses will eventually time out, you're starting to go down to 15, and so on. Um, this class is really simple. It just has this sort of concept of these character stats. It has an update, uh, which will just update um, all of these time bonuses. The time bonuses are these guys. It just has a bonus and a frame timer. This pattern should look a little familiar if you saw my previous Tutorial Tuesday swap trick, because I used a very similar example here. Um, so it's going to remove this, you know, lower this, this frame timer and return, you know, whether or not this frame timer goes to zero. So once the frame timer hits zero, this bonus needs to be removed. And uh, I use the swap trick right here to remove that. So I, you know, I just very easily re uh, remove it this way. You know, I'm not going to go through this because this is verbatim what we used in the swap trick. So check that video out if you haven't seen the first one. Um, I have the ability to add a bonus. All this does is adds a bonus here um, to my, my vector, and I can get the strength. So this is just a function that will get me the total strength. It calculates it right here and there, um, which is uh, uh, which is a, a simple little loop that goes through it. Um, I chose not to do it, but in the real world, there's actually an accumulate function that probably you might want to use instead. Um, but I chose not to do it to, to make it more visible as to what's here. Then in main, all I do here is I instantiate the character stats. I add some I totally random bonuses in this case, or somewhat random because rand is a terrible random number generator. Um, and then you know we're ready to go, and we have this loop. So the loop will update all the stats, and then we'll check to see if strength is less than some minimum strength value. Um, and that minimum strength is this, and it's what we start as our base. So basically, once all the bonuses are gone, we're done. And so if I build this and run it, so I step, the problem is that I can just keep going, right? It never exits. And there's a bug here. You know, well, what's, what's going on? Why am I never exiting? Like, these, these should go. So, you know, I can step through it and all that stuff. And that's, that's pretty straightforward. 
Uh, and the bug is really simple. Um, you know, I can spoil the bug and say that this is the bug, right? It needs to be less than or equal to main strength or min strength. Um, but let's kind of go through it as if we don't know. You know, I've created this, in a real game, there would be a lot of complexity going on. So, um, you know, this is a, a trivial example, admittedly. Um, so what I want to do is uh, I'm going to hit, I'm just going to set a breakpoint. Actually, I'm going to set a breakpoint here. And oops, let's build this guy and run it again. And so here we are. And as soon as I hit this, I'm here. What is my strength at this point? Like, I can't even calculate it because these are, are relative or somewhat random. So, you know, and I can't, you know, I could go to stats, like I could actually dig into this, right? This seems like a pain in the ass. So let's, let's kind of go in here and go onto this side and we'll say, uh, stats and I could dig in here and I could say, okay, so my bank strength, base, base strength is five and I have these guys that have four. So I could say four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So 13 plus five gives me 18. So I should have a base strength of, or I should have a total strength of 18. That should be my strength at this point. Um, but that seems terrible, especially if I have tons of these and if these are really complicated things, so I have to dig through and like, this is, this is kind of a pain. Um, Cause I have a function, a const function that just does this. So enter the immediate window. Um, so how do I get the immediate window? Well, the immediate window, if I try and slowly scroll this back up here, if you go to debug, windows, there it is, immediate window. And so the immediate window, it'll, it'll create this little window down here. I usually just throw it down here where my watches are. Um, you can basically type whatever you want. You can actually see that I have like old stuff in here back when it optimized out my function. So I can type in basically anything. So it knows my current call context. So that means, you know, I have stats, dot, I have stats, which is a local variable inside of main. It knows what stats is. It knows exactly what it is. I can say stats and then there it is. It's going to show me the data inside of it, like just very briefly. But let's say stats and I'll create a little space here. Um, stats dot get strength. What it's going to do now is it's going to call get strength and tell me what the return value is. 18. That's what we wanted. So that's the power of this thing. You can actually do more. Um, I did not test this, but let's see, let's just see what happens, right? Let's add a bonus. This may this may work. Um, that's going to expire in seven frames. That's for well. So we have 18. Let's put it to 21. We'll add three. Void, okay, that means the function returned nothing. Now let's do strength. I just hit up, by the way, it, it remembers my history. So strength. oh, 25. Uh, oh, I think I, I swapped the, um, I did. A bonus is the first thing, not frame timer. Okay, so that's why it's 25, because it's actually adding seven to 18. Um, but there it is, right? So I just, I've modified things. Like I can just sit here and make a bunch of changes. And that is incredibly powerful. Um, when I was working on The Sims 4, we had an immediate type window. We had a Python interpreter. Visual Studio now has one as well. Um, it's just, you can actually do this. I, I do this. I actually do this all the time now. Uh, if you go to debug, Windows, Python. Oh, no, where are you? Um, I usually just have it up. Maybe it's just in the regular Windows. Um, you can change, there's tons of windows in here that you can change. Um, oh, here it is, tools, Python, uh, Python interactive window. Um, so that gives me this, which is super cool. This is just Python, right? X equals 10, you know? Um, <clears throat> I can, you know, create some list of like, you know, Y equals some list. Right, and then I can just print it. Right, you can do all sorts of things. Um, so I use this all the time just for like checking math, uh, which is nice, uh, or just whatever I want. But to have this immediate window here, um, as I was as I was saying on The Sims Four, we had a similar thing. We just had this Python interpreter, uh, and we could just do it. It's the same exact thing as the immediate window here. We could do it within that context. And there were times where I would sit there and I would test a system without writing a whole bunch of code. I would test it live through the immediate system. I did that all the time um, because I just had the whole context there. So you could almost write, like I would write an entire algorithm 
in the immediate window because it was just purely interactive and I could just have it run constantly. I didn't have to rerun the game. You know, like, running and loading, the, like, The Sims 4 in debug mode before we had optimized a lot of the load times, I mean, that was a long load. It was a, it was a long load to load into a world, especially a big world. So it was really, like, I would just totally design and write an algorithm there. And um, I've run into a couple of boundaries with the immediate window, but for the most part, it's really powerful. So that's the immediate window. I highly recommend that you check it out if you do any kind of C++ work. Um, it's always, you know, when I debug, it's part of my normal, these are just my normal windows that I have down here that I always have, you know, the autos, threads, a few watch windows, right? Just to kind of see, you know, all this stuff here. Um, you know, none of this is useful unless I actually hit some breakpoint. Um, but if I, so if I come down here, you know, immediate windows always up along with my autos and threads and registers, although registers is just because I teach an assembly language class um, and so on. Like I just have, these are my standards, just it's part of my standard, it's part of my staple. So like I said, I highly, highly recommend that you check this out, that you play around with it and that you use it in your own debugging. Hope that was useful. Uh, let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you next time.